Hello and welcome to the instructional video for Morpher. Morphing is a way to take one image and organically transform it into another image. On top of the ability to morph, you also have the ability to warp. Warping is the deformation of an image. In order to use the plugin, you need to have a source image and a target image. If the target image is not the same size as the source image, it will be resized to fit the source image. So you begin by selecting two images. The target image should be copied to the clipboard. So select all and then copy the image. Now switch over to the source image, select the effects menu, select the render submenu, and then select Morpher. And now you can see um, Morpher's grid. Morpher's grid can be adjusted to higher and higher resolutions up to um, 1600 squares. 1600 rectangles. Uh, you can adjust the color. Um, whatever lets you see the background the best. Some transparent ones. Yeah, there's an undo. Uh, there's a series of previews. And in the file menu you can save the grid or save your work or you can load your work. And then you can export a sequence of uh, morphs or export a sequence of warps and how many frames you want that sequence to be. The undo is unlimited so you can always go back to the beginning. Let's start by doing a simple warp. Take your mouse and start dragging the nubs, the intersections of the grid around. By spinning the wheel on the mouse, you'll be able to change the sensitivity to how many of those nubs you are affecting. As you spin, you can see a circle enlarge and um, shrink, and that tells you the sensitivity range of your mouse. Now, when you're ready to see what that deformation of the grid looks like, Click on the top preview image. Click on the use warp only button if you want to use this image in paint.net. A warp can also be exported as an animated sequence. Click on the preview menu and click on warp sequence or use the control W hotkey and you will see the animation on the lower right preview window. You can now save the warp as a series of images by selecting the file menu and selecting export PNG. The number of frames selected will be exported into full-size files that you can import into paint.net and create your animated GIF. Now we can use the slider and preview what a warp sequence looks like. Now for a morph, if you right click on the grid you will see the target image appear. So in order to morph what you want to do is you want to align the points on the source with the points on the target. You can do this by dragging and right clicking and now the guideline shows you that this point came from underneath the eye and if you right click you put it underneath the eye. So let me make some room here. So you have to repeat the process until you have your warp exactly how you want it. So if you spin the mouse wheel, you can influence, you can change how much influence 
the dragging of the points has how many how many points you actually affect nubs so by decreasing it you can fine tune Notice by just right clicking and left clicking, I'm able to start a morph. By clicking, you can see what the distortion is going to look like. It's starting to fall into place. Maybe a little comical looking. And then if you click on the lower sequence preview, as opposed to the warp se preview, clicking on it or selecting morph sequence will allow you to see what you've morphed so far. You can see it morph before your very eyes. Obviously, I've just concentrated on the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. The key is you want to concentrate on the most obvious features, uh, namely the hairline, the silhouette, the eyes, the ears, the nose. Uh, if, if the hands are present, you want to morph between the hands. And by the time you're done, you can see just the faces morphing here. And the full morph, you can export PNG morph and this will export a series of images, a series of frames that you can later save as a GIF. So let's load a predetermined morph. As you can see, I took time to adjust Mona Lisa's hair to fit Liz's hair. And I also took time to adjust Mona Lisa's body to fit Liz's body, and I'm sure Mona Lisa would thank me. And if we look at the morph, each, uh, each frame of the morph actually takes two passes, so you'll see it go and run a, a foreground pass and a background pass before it advances the frame. Let's do a quick transition towards the end. Okay, now the morph is complete, and you can see how all those fine transitions translate into a morph. Um, obviously, I like working with large chunks in order to get it to work. Um, so, Mona Lisa's hair. Okay, the large chunks allow for really, really um, smooth-looking morphs. If you nitpick and you do one little nub at a time, and not only will it take you forever, 
but it's going to look jagged. So try to use as large of a, of a range as possible and then you know, fine tune the, the little details with the smaller range. And that's, of course, by turning the mouse wheel. So once you have a successful preview, the ultimate result is you want to generate a morph sequence or a warp sequence, which you can bring into a GIF. And let me demonstrate how to do that. I'm going to pick a morph sequence. I'm going to title it test and now it's going to take quite a while since it's doing full size images and again each one is going to take two passes to complete each image so I'm going to speed up the video I'm going to put a transition here and we'll come back in a moment Now we have a series of images that have been saved. The fastest way to import and to import them in the correct order is go to the Layers menu, go to Import from Files, and you'll see all your files. If you sort, now you can input them in the correct order. So if we look at the layers, we'll see that the background is at the bottom and they've been all imported. It looks like reverse order but it will animate in the bottom to top direction. If we want to reverse the animation then import again and reverse the sort by clicking on name you can sort and reverse sort and select all your files and now when you open them you'll import them in reverse order in order to create a pause at the beginning or end of the animation just duplicate some frames <laughs> one more for good luck and now we have everything we need for a circular animation so we go to the save as file menu and we pick AGIF by Medora and we um, call it test. It's always a good name. And you can see the progress indicator at the bottom. It's actually a, a very, very fast, fast file type plugin. There's a lot of frames. There we go. Hit OK. I have about two millisecond delay on each frame. Um, you can do it faster. You, uh, you can export more frames. You can do it faster. Uh, you can do it slower. Um, whatever kind of effect you're looking for. I'm looking to strike a balance between speed and size, uh, smoothness of animation, and very, very shortly, drinking coffee, we will have an animation. We're done. So if we go over to our file, I like the preview by right-clicking and opening with Chrome. It's very quick and you can see the full animation 